System Shock Remastered is an absolutely incredible game and I highly recommend it. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So in this video we're going to break down this remastering of System Shock which is essentially the beginning of the Shock series I guess you could call it. You know, it obviously ends up with Bioshock um, and I guess we've all played those games by now. But System Shock 2 is one of my favorite games. System Shock though I've never played it before until now. This is incredible and like what you've got is this fully fledged remake of the game the original game and you've basically got some nice little new mechanics but it's essentially the same game you've got a new upgraded graphics engine as well and also the original voice actor of showdown which is just mental i mean listen to showdown she's so good serves me alone. I have complete control of this entire level. With, with, with cameras as my eyes and nodes as, as, as my hands, I rule here, insect. Insect. Now, what is really cool about System Shock is there is this modular difficulty system. It's really good. Now, the game is pretty difficult anyway. Now, I've just been playing on normal, and it is fairly difficult. Um, however, you can really tailor this to the experience that you want. So, combat is broken down into normal mode, where the hacker is never alone as enemies are numerous and pack a punch. Or you can be on number one, which is easy, uh, and there'll be fewer enemies, and it's basically a lot easier to kill them, or you can make it super hard, so there's loads of enemies, they deal tons of damage, you've got to be very careful. Also, your mission difficulty, so this is, um, this basically, it's sort of like how you get around the station, so uh, the way, you'll see this in the video, but the game doesn't hold your hand at all, but if you reduce these difficulty settings down, it will start to hold your hand. It will give you waypoints. It will show you things that you need to pick up. It won't let you destroy, as it says here, mission critical items, or well, as it did before I came off it. Um, now again, on number two, Showdown is watching, but you don't get waypoints. You don't get, you, you can destroy mission critical stuff. And then number three, you've just got 10 hours to complete the game or you die. <laughs> so uh, yeah, really cool. Cyber, now this is when you go into the cyberspace, which is like the other element to the game. Again, you'll see this in a second in the video but uh yeah this is just i've got it on normal that's how i played it take a stroll through citadel stations network or three if you die in the game you die in real life <laughs> and then puzzle um yeah this is just how difficult the puzzles are so the puzzles are pretty again you'll see this in the video the puzzles can be quite frustrating because i mean if you don't have it on this which is the easy mode where the puzzles are really simple even on normal the step up is quite big and it can be quite daunting and honestly i lost about 45 minutes on the first puzzle because i didn't know what i was doing and i'm like i know i need to get over this bridge but maybe there's somewhere else i need to go and then in the end i eventually worked it out by looking at the puzzle and seeing these two things but again you'll see this in the video it's probably the most frustrating thing about the game and of course you can make that super difficult if you like so yeah really cool modular difficulty system You've also got the uh, very famous inventory management system. Um, again, if you've played Bioshock games, if you've played System Shock 2, you'll be familiar with this. So yeah, there's a lot of inventory management which goes on. You need to make sure you're carrying the right stuff. Obviously, on the different difficulty settings, you can actually not carry the right stuff or accidentally delete stuff that you need. Um, there is a system as well where you can vaporize stuff that you don't require and then you can place them into uh, recycling receptacles which give you credits and then you can use credits throughout the station for things like weapon upgrades, um, ammunition, medical items, um, items that gives you you know, various buffs. So you've got the Berserk which makes you just go crazy for melee damage, um, an item which prevents your stamina draining and things like that, right? So it is sort of worth picking up all of the trash and destroying it and getting the and taking that to the recycler and then getting credits. Um, so you can do a lot of backtracking on the station to kind of facilitate that, and it can make things a little bit easier, especially on the harder difficulty settings for sure. Let's talk about the puzzles. So this is the first puzzle you need to complete. It is a requirement to progress in the game. Now, I was very confused to begin with, because if you notice, to the left of this panel, there's like this funny little sort of plus sign. Well, 
if you that thing yeah so if i highlight that it's actually a thing and it says i'm missing a component so i thought oh, i need some sort of component to finish this puzzle so i'm not really sure what i'm looking at here i'm messing with the puzzle i've got the energy bar to the maximum or at least i think it's to the maximum i'm like well why isn't this opening what's going on and i ran back and forth throughout the station trying to work this out i mean look at me i'm literally staring at it like what's going on i don't know what's happening but I spent, and I'm not ashamed to admit this, I spent about 45 minutes running back through the station. Like, have I missed something? Um, where's this item that I need? Um, actually, I didn't need any of that. I just needed to use my eyes. Now, this is actually super rewarding when you work it out. But I can also see a lot of people being like, oh, this is so bad. I I'm literally, what is this game? I, I don't know how to progress. That could be a bit of a problem. But I think, and I well, I don't think, I completely agree with the devs for actually leaving this in this remake because it just makes it like this is the experience if you guys go back and play system shock 2 again i know i'm referencing that quite a lot in this video because it is the system shock that i've played the most um there's actually a really good like mod you can install onto that to have like upgraded hd texture packs and stuff but um it's pretty much the same right things are not explained to you you need to work it out for yourself and this is like essentially the original version of that so you can see there's like these little buttons i can interact with now you might notice there's two little blue dots see on the top of that bar i need to get the second dot lit so i need to mess with this control panel to get enough energy in just to light the two blue dots up and then it will activate the bridge now i'm looking at this thinking maybe this is how it works right but i'm thinking surely not that doesn't really make any sense can i even do that i am literally randomly bashing the buttons here but you can see i'm trying to get it lower I do work this out and then the bridge spawns that thing which I'm trying to activate, which of course is non-functional, but you can override it with this uh, completing this puzzle. But again, this is something you need to do, right? If you don't do this, you cannot progress in the game. So I can imagine there'll be people out there who pick up this game and get super frustrated. Now, I'm pretty sure people can just Google. I mean, maybe if you watch this video, you'll see the solution as I eventually work it out. Um, but this is that old school feeling, right? That's what the game is going for. It isn't holding your hand but i do like the fact that they do have settings which do give you waypoints and do show you what you need to do and you can reduce the difficulty of these systems now it must be said you can't do this while the game is active so whatever difficulty settings you've you've selected that will be the way the game plays you can't then go oh no i want to just change the difficulty of the puzzles not that i've tried that i'll have you know but you can't do it anyway so it's just tough luck so you can see, look, I'm messing around with the different nodes. I'm trying to plug them into different places. I'm like, can I even get that? Maybe if I change these over to cycle the power around because it might adapt the amount of power that's being put into the system. You can see, again, it's gone to full power. Again, I'm a bit confused. I twist this knob. I'm like, okay, maybe this will do something. I will admit at this point, I'm literally just pulling stuff out and trying to work out, <laughs> will this work? But you can see what I mean by, even by me watching this back, it is a little bit frustrating watching it. I think this is it now. I think I, I flicked the switch in the middle. And I think that fixes it because that drains the power just enough. Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, there we go. So suddenly it's like, oh, I've, I've completed it. I'm like, right. So what happens now? <laughs> I'm just looking at it because I don't even think the bridge is going to spawn because I think it's been destroyed. And then, oh, look, there's a bridge. Yeah, system shock puzzles. Good time. <laughs> okay, let's talk about cyberspace because this is the other big element to the game. Now, I don't want to spoil any of the story stuff. You might have noticed so far, I haven't actually been talking about the story, even where we are. Although I think you can work a bunch of things out. I mean, it takes place on Citadel Station. There is an evil AI called Shodan. And then we just sort of go from there. But I'm not going to spoil the story. I think it's, it is a really, really cool story, uh, which again is expanded on in System Shock 2 to a level which is just absolute gaming brilliance. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, this mode is more of like a arcade shoot em up style of mode uh, and you're in this sort of like tron-esque style world uh, this it's okay cyberspace is it's not as good as being out in the real world if you ask me it, it is a lot i i kind of find it a lot easier you're just basically flying through trying to destroy the enemies as fast as possible before they kill you which again is fairly easy if you've got any kind of experience in any fps game um, there are bosses in some of these modes and there are special things you need to shoot and things you need to collect but basically, going into cyberspace will allow you to unlock things in the real world. It's sort of a way of, like, you're going into the security system to the station. So you can see there, medical force field door has been deactivated. Now, the other thing with this game is not everything is required. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to go into every room. You don't have to unlock every force field. There might be interesting things behind them. There might not be. There could be new items behind them. There could be upgrades. There could be currency. 
uh, for you to use in the machines. There could be uh, all manner of things. It, it's part of the charm of this game. It's part of the charm of the exploration and getting lost in the world. And I think the game does a really good job of that. And System Shock always has. But I think this remaster has done an, an incredible job of it because they've literally upgraded the graphics. If you guys go and Google System Shock and look at the original. I, I mean, this is going to sound pretty harsh, but I think it's kind of unplayable in 2023. It doesn't look great. It's really, really ancient. The way it works is is very ancient. Whereas System Shock 2 did take it up a level. Um, and as I say, that is playable with, you can just download HD texture packs and go and play that at any resolution. And, and it, it's a really good time. I do hope, though, that they actually remaster that as well, because I think a remake of System Shock 2 would be incredible to play through, especially experiencing how good this has been so far. Now, lore is delivered to you in the game uh, through audio logs and text logs, but just listen to these audio logs. They are so cool. Althea, I figured out where the laser is pointed. Earth! If we can contain the energy from the laser somehow, maybe the X-22 from Gamma? Would that get the shield generators to full power? What about the overrides? I have to map this out. Results from our trials with the nanobots have been extremely encouraging. Their ability to weave just about anything into existence is remarkable. A few more months of study and I think we can safely deploy them to mining operations on Deimos. Once they're there, we'll never have to ship parts again. And these things are littered all throughout the station and they do give you critical information as to the story and what's going on. You don't need all of that information, but also some of them might contain key codes and things like that so you can access other areas of the station. It's really cool and again, it makes you feel part of the world. It is incredible. So yeah, that is pretty much the System Shock remake or remaster. I guess it's a remaster, isn't it? It's not really a remake. I, it's great. It's really, really great. You've got all of those things where you've got different ammo types you can load into your weapons. You've got armor piercing rounds that you might want to use against robots. You've got different styles and types of weapons. You've got the energy system where you can use your energy weapons and you can charge yourself up throughout the station. You've got various different types of grenades. You've, you've even got things like mines. You've got There's so much going on in this game. And I think one of the things which really helps it is the level design is very claustrophobic and it would be because you're on a space station spoiler um but it's super claustrophobic this is a horror game it, it always has been system shock 2 is a very frightening game to play through as well this though you can see where it all come from and that's what i've been really enjoying playing through this game like i, I went into this knowing what system shock was but I've never played system shock before and this has allowed me in 2023 to sit down and play system shock now again things like the graphics engine are fine it runs on unreal engine so the performance is great i got lost in this world for hours and hours and hours i still haven't finished the game it is a fairly long game like i said there is a difficult setting for the mission what you can set to uh, hard so level three and that essentially means you've got 10 hours to complete it so you need to speed run everything but you're going to get a good chunk of play time out of this and i only hope that because of the success of this we get to see System Shock 2 get remastered because that would be incredible or, or remade. This is really, really cool. Like, everything is great about this. I love the graphic design. I love the art design. I love the audio. The audio actually has been uh, overhauled as well. So there's new audio effects, but you'll just hear enemies moaning, especially like the mutated enemies. Like, they're in grotesque pain and they're moaning in the distance. You're almost doing them a favor if you go and kill them. You get things like... You, you maybe find some secret passcode where you can access some room. And in the room, there's just a corpse of a person with a load of supplies. And there's an audio log. And the audio log will be, I've been trapped in here for three weeks. And I'm a family. I'm missing them. I can hear noises outside. You know, I don't know what's going on. And they're dead. You know what I mean? They've clearly just died of malnutrition because they've run out of food. They wouldn't leave the room. It's so good. It really creates an atmosphere. Um, I think it's missing in a lot of modern games. And it does, again, show you the brilliance of the game design, of the direction of the System Shock series. And, of course, that went forward into the Bioshock series uh, and on from there. But, yeah, honestly, guys, I highly recommend this. It is, it is a very good time. It's a old-school experience in a new-school sort of hat. It's really cool. All right, guys, thank you. I've been Stylosa. If you've enjoyed the video, then do subscribe and, and like and all of that good stuff. And leave a comment below, and I'll catch you 
on the next video. See you soon.